So I was always the kid that could draw in class. Um, and I always loved insects. So my wife is from Western Australia and uh, she, we'd been married for a couple of years and she hadn't been home. And so we decided to take a trip to Perth, uh, where she's from. Mm -hmm. And by chance, I brought along that old Pentax K1000. I had sort of drifted away from nature as well. I was working, I was in a new marriage and all this kind of stuff. And, but because the, uh, there was something about the area that we were in that really remind, reminded me of home. Mm -hmm. And I reconnected with nature during that trip. I had this moment when I came home and I saw a cardinal land in my backyard. Mm -hmm. And I'd been looking at parrots for you know a few weeks. And when I mm -hmm. saw that cardinal, it was like I was seeing it with fresh eyes again. And it made me wonder, what else am I missing? Actually, one of my most favorite places on earth is very close to where I'm sitting right now uh, mm -hmm. in a place called the Mountain Bridge Wilderness, which is in the northwest corner, basically the southern Blue Ridge Escarpment of South Carolina. I like it because it's very much like the Smokies in many ways, but it, it's full of things that most people take for granted. It's mm -hmm. incredibly rich, and yet we know so little about it. If I could be anywhere when I pass on to the next life, that's just where I'd like my ashes to be. It's just a special place to me. So Neil Binby had been photographing some stuff in the field against brightly lit panels of um, acrylite. So I'd kind of gotten into a rut with my own work by this time. This was 2009. And I was talking with Neil about it, and I was like, wow, this stuff really looks great. And he said, yeah, I just wish it could become a movement. Interesting. And so, yeah, and so I, I came up with this idea of this project. I said, what if we could get people to work in their own communities around the world and use them to teach their own communities about mm -hmm. what's around them? He said, sure. I mean, it sounds like a good idea. If you're able to do it, let's, let's go for it. By taking away the context of the background, you really see things that most people overlook in a, in a very different way. And, and some people have asked, well, that, you know, why are you doing this? This is not natural and that kind of thing. But the right. thing is, people who are not used to, to seeing animals in the wild, because animals want to blend in. They don't want to be mm -hmm. seen whether they're predator or prey. They want to hide, typically. And by doing this, we give people a bridge to nature, you know, um, help people see things in a fresh, with fresh eyes. And the other thing that I like about the white background is that it, um, it means that if you photograph something in South America or you photograph something in your backyard in South Carolina, you can't really tell what's more exotic. And so hmm. it basically puts everything on an even playing field and helps hmm. people look and see things. Wow, you know, I didn't realize I had anything that looked that amazing hmm. here in this little tiny town in South Carolina, you know. Hmm. How do I get involved, or, or maybe more specifically, you know, how do I do one of these bio blitzes at my local nature preserve? You know, what does that conversation look like? What I recommend is you go to them and you say, you know, I would like to create this body of work that would be unique to you that you could use for your local outreach efforts. Mm -hmm. um, and that really has a lot of appeal because even though someone could go online and, and buy photographs or mm -hmm. whatever for, for educational purposes, to have this unique high resolution collection of images that they can use on anything has been uh, mm. tremendously valuable. Some of our best contributors are actually you know, retired farmers or people who just have a love of nature. But even if someone doesn't know how to use the technique, people like to find stuff. So the students can go out and collect. They may have butterfly nets, they have uh, you know, little capturing um, jars, things like that, and they bring the specimens to me and I photograph them and while I'm doing it I can tell them a bit about what I'm doing, let the kids experiment with a camera. So it's a real hands-on process. Mm. I was talking in one school about creating a field guide to the to the species that are found around the school. Mm. And that permission to be uh, having fun in nature really can have an impact on the, the rest of their life because mm. they feel like it's okay for them to pick up an insect. How do you find stuff? Because what <laughs> if they walk through the yard and they think, you know, on this acre, I, I don't really have much. I, I hear stuff, you hear insects every now and then, but how am I going to find them? Well, you really have to slow down. You have to, to take your time and really look closely um, because, again, things want to hide from you because you're a giant. They're mm -hmm. these little tiny things. Imagine being approached by a skyscraper. You know, no, no, it would be no. very, very frightening. Read about them. Read about their life cycles. If you want to study butterflies uh, or swallowtails, for example, mm -hmm. learn what they eat. You know, learn the times that the caterpillars are most active because everything's not active at the same time. Some mm -hmm. species come out at night because they don't want to be eaten by birds, things mm -hmm. like that. How does photography contribute to your experience of being alive? Photography has actually changed my life tremendously. Um, it, it's definitely made me a better naturalist. It makes me look at the world differently. 
Um, I learn how to ask questions differently about things I see. Mm -hmm. And it also just allows me a great outlet for peace when I can get out and mm -hmm. shoot. Um, it allows me some time just to really to think and, and, and relax and, and that kind of thing, if it's not too um, demanding of an assignment, if you will. Mm -hmm. I had a, an experience early on with my oldest son, Adam. He was quite young, and I was trying to photograph something. And he was like, Daddy, Daddy, you know, look at this, look at this. And I was so focused on what I was doing, and I was getting irritated. And then it was like, wow, you know, this is totally not as important as what he's trying to show me. And it turned out he had found this really amazing um, insect and he was trying to show it to me. But I was so busy being this, you know, professional photographer mm. um, that I wasn't able to see that. And I think you always have these great lessons in humility when you're out with your kids. You can look online and you can see tons of quote unquote perfect images. But after a while, to me, it just becomes plastic because hmm. there's none of the, the the photographer is not present in the work. Hmm. Um, whereas an image could be gritty, it could be you know slightly dark, it could be slightly off center, or whatever or however it needs to be. But um, but when the photographer knows their subject, that connection comes across. Hmm. And also, I would say, don't shoot just to get Facebook likes. I mean, it's very tempting hmm. to try to do something to make yourself popular. Yeah. But, you know, you're just going to blend in with everybody else. Just take risks. Yeah. You know, do things that you believe in, and that'll help you get started. And awesome. work. Work a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Art. <laughs> awesome. Well, Clay, thank you so much for your time, and uh, really appreciate you joining us here on the show. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Aww.